morning and welcome to worship. I'm so glad that you're joining us today, whether you're at home, chilling on your couch like I am, or maybe you're popping in later in the week to see how the service went. I'm glad you're here because I know that God has a very specific piece of encouragement for you today. We have some special guests who are coming up all the way from South Carolina to share their ministry of music and testimonies with us today and to remind us of the promises of God. I'm extra excited because I get to introduce them to you today as two of my dearest friends, Andrew and Darby Schultz. Now I met Darby when I was transferring to her college and I was coming in for an audition and an interview and I needed a place to stay because I was very far away from home. So admission said, that's fine, you can just chill on the floor of the student's room. And I said, okay. So I showed up at Darby's door with a sleeping bag in one hand and a pile of music in the other and we've been great friends ever since. The school actually had a program where older students mentor the incoming students. So even though we were the same age, she became my big sis, even though I call her my little big because she's so much shorter than I am. <laughs> but we roomed together. We had our Wednesday weekly pizza nights. We listened to way too much Hamilton when we should have been studying for tests and we wrote papers the night before they were due, like all good students. And of course, we sat on the couch and we talked about boys. Now, Converse was an all women's college, except that they allowed men in the graduate program and there were like two in the entire school. Enter Andrew. So one day Darby came home talking about this guy that she met and I'd seen Andrew in the music building before. Sometimes he talks with an English accent just for fun. That's Andrew. And so I thought he was an exchange student from England. He wasn't, but they still laugh at me about that. But I got to watch as their friendship grew and they started going on coffee dates and then more formal dates and eventually were engaged and married. And now they have this beautiful ministry that God has blessed them with. So it has been a joy getting to know them, seeing them grow in their relationship with God and now seeing them share it. So I'm so glad that they are here today. So welcome Andrew and Darby, we're so glad you're here and welcome to everyone who tuned in to watch. I know that this will be an encouragement for you today. So thank you for being here. Let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day that you've given us. Thank you so much for your promises, which are true. Thank you so much for Jesus and his sacrifice for us. I pray that you will send us the Holy Spirit today to whisper in our ears the encouragement that you know we need to hear. I pray that we will be open and that we will be moldable and that we will be changed. I pray that we will leave refreshed and encouraged today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Chelsea. 
It's good to be with you here this morning. My name is Darby Schultz, and this is my husband, Andrew Schultz, and we are a full-time music ministry called A Better Covenant, uh, based in Rock Hill, South Carolina. We have been in full-time music ministry together ever since we got married about a year and a half ago, and we are so happy that we've been given the chance to share with you this morning. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to share about some promises of God with you. Our first album, Promises, came out in May of 2019. And ever since then, we've been sharing the gospel through God's word and his promises ever since. And so we're going to share with you some of the promises that have affected our lives the most in the past couple years. Um, ones that have encouraged us and gotten us through hard times. And so the first promise that we're going to share with you is the promise of protection. And so when we were first recording this album a few years ago, our very first day in the studio, we had had a wonderful, productive day, and we were driving home in two separate cars, and we were stopped at a stop sign, and the truck behind us decided to not stop. And so his truck hit Andrew's car, and Andrew's car hit me. And so I pulled my car over to the side of the road, and, and I looked back at Andrew, and he wasn't moving. And I ran back to him, and he was crying. And I said, oh no, tell me what's broken. And he says, my tuba. And then I start crying, because I remember my violin is in the back of my car. And so we frantically call our parents and they help us pull out our instruments there on the side of the road. And would you believe it, there was not a dent or a scratch in any one of our instruments. And we were uninjured as well, in including the person who hit us. Well, as if that wasn't bad enough, exactly six months later, the day our first single came out, the same accident happened again. Except this time we were in the same car and we were stopped at a red light and the U-Haul behind us decided to not stop. Sent us flying off the road. But you know what? Once again, we walked away with nothing more than a headache. And so now whenever we ask people for prayers for safe travels, we do not take them lightly. And we praise the Lord every day that we're able to get in a car and move around without getting injured. And while that's a pretty unique story, getting into two accidents in the same year, this, this past year, the one that just ended, 2020, it was, um, it was a rough one. And, and, I, and I think it was a pretty universal rough year for everybody. Um, it wasn't something that just affected a certain group of people. It affected everyone in some way, whether that was through job stress, health scares, you know, uh, being isolated, everyone was affected in some way. But, you know, the Lord promises us that he will never leave us or forsake us. And so that is what can push us to get through the day, every single day, even bad days. And you know what? The very first song that we recorded on that album, when the day that we were hit, it was a song that we had written that was based off of a couple passages in Psalms, and I just want to read one of them to you. I want to read you this promise from Psalms that talks about our God and Savior being as strong and as solid as a rock. It's Psalms 18.2, and it says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength and whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. This is my rock.
like I said, that album came out in 2019. And for the next nine months, we had a wonderful time visiting churches every weekend, spreading the promises of our Lord and Savior. And then March 14 hit. And I'm sure many of you have your own stories of what happened on March 14. But on our March 14, all of a sudden I started getting calls from church after church, just canceling. And the next thing I knew, our next six months worth of concerts, gone in an instant. And then a couple days later, Andrew's middle school, where he had taught choir, decided that this was a great time to cut their entire music program. And so within a matter of days, both of us were completely unemployed. And I wish I could tell you that we, we, we took it, it, we took it all in stride and we never wavered in our faith, but I have to admit we were scared. I definitely don't recommend a worldwide pandemic for your first year of marriage. Don't recommend it at all. But we were terrified and we didn't know how on earth we were going to continue paying the bills. And we just, and we completely forgot about that last promise. Um, but, but we had already decided that we were going to record a second album. And so it was quickly decided that we were going to have to record this second album here in our home since all the recording studios were closed. And, um, and so as we were working on it, we were thinking about this and, you know, during all the unemployment, we had plenty of time to read together and spend time together. And I was so anxious and depressed and I, I, I had forgotten all about these promises and I could just feel myself spiraling. But as I was taking some time to read portions of the Bible I hadn't read before, I came across a guy who I think also struggled with anxiety and depression and yet the Lord was still able to use him in a powerful way. And that man's name was Jeremiah. And... I mean, just read one chapter of Lamentations. You can't tell me that guy wasn't depressed. And I mean, he had every right to be. He, he, was in a, he, was, he was in a thankless job as God's prophet. He didn't exactly have the most encouraging message in the world. And so people were trying to kill him all the time. He was thrown in jail. He vented to God multiple times about his calling and why have you created me? I wish you would just kill me. And so it got me thinking, what, what inspired Jeremiah to continue waking up in the morning? Why didn't he just give up through all these horrible things that were happening to him? And I think there are many answers to that question, all having to do with God, of course. But the answer that I came up with, I think Jeremiah chose each and every morning to look up in inspiration instead of around around him in desperation and i think that's what god is calling us to do in these times as well it's it's very easy and thanks to technology we can look at depressing news on our phone even before our feet hit the ground in the morning but i think before we look at all that i think god is calling us to make a conscious choice each and every day to choose to not look at the rest of the world in despair, but instead keep our focus on him. And if we keep our focus on him, and then our, then our priorities will automatically stay in order, and we will always be encouraged because we will be connected to our Lord and Savior. And so no matter how badly 2020 went for you, it is never too late to continue to reach out to our Father because he always reaches out to us. And if uh, and if nothing else fails, I hope that you will turn to the words of Jeremiah. This I recall to mind, and therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness.
What a wonderful promise. So as I mentioned, we ended up recording that second album right here in this very room with this keyboard, a one microphone, and a very outdated version of GarageBand on a very old laptop. But you know what? We had a lot of fun with it, and once again, the Lord blessed. And now to show you how nerdy we truly are, Andrew's going to give you a music history lesson about this next song. So, hello. One of my favorite hymns of all time that I listened to growing up as I grew up Lutheran is A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And I know y'all probably have heard that hymn here or there, maybe once or twice or a hundred times, <laughs> who knows. But I can't talk about that because of the person that wrote the song. The, the same guy that started this whole Reformation movement that kind of helped kickstart Lutheranism as we know it by the wonderful name of Martin Luther. Martin Luther was a reformer as we know, but he was also a pretty prolific composer. And of course, the hymn that he wrote that probably the most famous out of the ones that he wrote is A Mighty Fortress is Our God that he wrote in the year around 1527 or 1529. We don't exactly know when. But the cool thing about it is the way that he wrote it, you don't hear it that way anymore. Because when he wrote it, they didn't have those bar lines. They didn't have necessarily consistent rhythmic notation. You couldn't like tap your foot to it like you normally could in a normal hymn. It was way different back then. And of course, we're going to try to perform it as he may have written it back then. But... Another thing that I really like about his hymn is that it's based on one of my favorite psalms, Psalm 46, talking about God being as strong as a fortress, and he is our refuge, he is our strength. And I would just, just want to read kind of what this hymn's about. By the way, A Mighty Fortress is a paraphrase off of this. So I challenge you, whenever you sing it next time, try to figure out what part of Psalm 46 he's trying to write about. So here it is, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake in its swelling. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, just at the break of dawn, the nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. And let us not forget that he truly is our refuge, our strength. And we can take our hope in him. So I'm going to play through it once. And then Darby's going to come in. And she's going to play it. And then we're going to end it by the way that you know it. Which was written, by the way, in the 1800s.
So as we started working on this second album, of course, uh, uh, over the summer, places slowly started to reopen and through the power of technology, kind of like we're doing right now, we were able to do some live stream concerts that we had to cancel back in March of 2020. And as we started making these concerts up and started telling people, you know, about this second album, you know, that we originally had going in a completely different direction, they were like, no, 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 no. You can't stop talking about the promises now. This is what, this is what, this is when people need to hear them the most is during these discouraging times. And so we thought about it and we were like, okay, we can keep talking about the promises. Goodness knows there's thousands more where those came from. And so we decided to continue talking about the promises on the second album, but instead of using our words and our music, we called it timeless because we wanted to show that God's promises have no expiration date and neither do these timeless hymns and timeless songs that express these promises. We love these songs and we hope you do as well. And another thing that never has an expiration date is the promise of God's grace. And unfortunately, it took me a little too long to understand that. A couple years ago, we were going through our premarital counseling and during one of our first sessions, the officiant asked us both, do you know you're saved? And Andrew said, yes, I've been convicted of the truth and I've been baptized and I know I'm saved. And I said, ah, boy, I hope so. <laughs> and I realized through more prayer and time with the Lord that I had gotten stuck in a bit of a rut. And I hope that some of you can relate. I had turned into what I now like to call the checklist Christian. I had this whole list of things I had to do every day for God. And I thought that if I forgot to pray in the morning or pray before any of my meals, or if I forgot to read something from the Bible, do a devotional, and then if the Lord decided to come back on that day and I hadn't completed my list, then, oh well. But that's not how God's grace works. And unfortunately, you know, we've only been on the road together for a year and a half, but unfortunately, this is a radical concept for some people. And I mean, I understand this was a radical concept for me too, but the, little, the literal translation of grace is unmerited favor. That means there's nothing we can do to earn it. There's nothing we can do to earn God's grace and love. As long as we accept it, it's ours. And the, and, the, and the great thing about his grace, especially, is that it is immediate. God doesn't wait for us to turn good before he gives it to us. It is immediate and it is 100% complete. God did not send his only son to pay the ultimate sacrifice for us here on this earth just to then ask us to pitch in the last dollar. That's not how his grace works. And, you know, this is, like I said, a time of isolation. But I believe that even during times of isolation, the Lord has given us spheres of influence that only we, that only we can touch. And so I, I just ask that if you know someone within your sphere of influence that is struggling with trying to earn God's love or trying to earn God's grace, that you just reach out to them and tell them, that there's, nothing that there's nothing we can do to earn God's grace. We just need to continue to accept it each and every day. We just need to know him in our minds and love him in our hearts. And so this song talks about that. It's from the end of a passage that says, But where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. <laughs>
We're going to switch things up for you. Andrew is indeed an amazing piano player, as you've heard, but he's also an award-winning brass player and teacher, and at this time we're going to switch things up, and I know you will be blessed by his baby tuba. support our new ministry. Firstly, we would really appreciate if you would keep us in your prayers. Thankfully, churches are beginning to open back up and we're beginning to travel more. And as you've heard, we don't have the greatest luck at red lights. So if you would just keep us in your prayers for travel, we would really appreciate it. Secondly, if you've liked the music you've heard and want to keep listening to it, then all our, all our music, both of our albums can be found online. It's on all streaming platforms, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, all of those. And then if you would like to order a physical copy to keep listening to, those orders can be made on our website, www.abettercovenantband.com. 
And also on our website, there is a donation link if you feel the Holy Spirit compelling you to donate towards our ministry. There is a link on the first page of our website there as well. And if you would like to keep in touch with us, we would love to keep in touch with you. Then you can follow A Better Covenant Band on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Spotify. We, and we just hope that you've been encouraged by what you've heard today. Our last promise that we want to talk about is the promise of peace and the rest that comes with it. I wrote this song many years ago when I was still in, in school and I was taking a songwriting class. And the only homework for this songwriting class was that you had to show up every day with at least 30 seconds of new music. It didn't have to be good, but it had to be at least 30 seconds and you had to present it in front of the entire class. And I remember this one day, I had nothing. I had stayed up way too late the night before and I overslept my alarm and I woke up with about 20 minutes to spare before class and I ran down to the music building and I threw myself in a practice room and started banging out some chords, trying to come up with something inspired and it just wasn't happening. And so finally I just broke down and cried and I said, Lord, I have nothing to give you today. But you know what? It's when we let go of the control we think we have over our own lives that God steps in and does his best work. And so with 20 minutes left, I was impressed with my favorite Bible verse of all time, Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So with that verse on my heart and about 20 minutes left, praise the Lord, not just 30 seconds, but this whole last song happened. Peace of the Lord be with you. 
I want to thank everybody for your generosity. You know, uh, Jesus said that we can be his hands and feet, not only here in our church family, in our community, but all over the world. And when we share our time, our talents, our possessions, all these gifts that God first gives to us, when we share them back, God can take a little and turn that little into a lot and whoo, lives are changed and saved forever. So thanks so much for your continued uh, giving and support to this mission outpost we call Zion Lutheran Church. Let's continue uh, to prepare our hearts for communion. Good and gracious God, you're a loving God, a faithful God, a God who is with us. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness from generation to generation. We thank you, Lord, for sending us Jesus, your only begotten Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks, God, for the salvation that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ, not only the abundant life that you offer us here, but the life, that eternal life that you have prepared for us. As we gather as a family from near and far around this table, send your holy and life-giving spirit upon this meal as it becomes for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we may receive him into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith, a dynamic faith, a vibrant faith that will compel us to be your love, to be your light in darkness. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. He gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, thank you for coming to us the way that you always do. Thank you for reminding us, God, that we are never alone. But also thank you for teaching us the importance of prayer and how we are to pray for one another, to support and to encourage one another. So together we pray that prayer that you taught your disciples so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to continue to commune uh, with one another. And I know that uh, we are not all here together. But remember, what unites us together is our faith and our relationship with Jesus Christ. So we're going to continue to reflect on what it means to have a Savior and uh, as we continue with communion. As we gather after communion, let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now lift our hearts together in the prayers of the people. I'll end each petition with, Hear us, O God, and I invite you to, to respond with, Your mercy is great. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. 
for the covenant God made with us in the waters of baptism, in thanksgiving for the baptized who have died in the Lord. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For all who share the gospel and proclaim the good news in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, missionaries, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, for Darby and Andrew, who shared their music and message today. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For all God's works in creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For government and leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all who are responsible for the well-being of civil society, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, those who are sick and hospitalized, those living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, or other chronic conditions, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, and all in any need, especially those on our prayer list, those recovering from COVID-19, and those who are dealing with long-term symptoms. We lift up also those on your hearts now, either out loud or silently. For caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For the concerns of this congregation, those who travel, those absent from worship, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, for the people of God in this place and online, and for other needs in our community, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this morning for worship. I hope you felt inspired, reinvigorated. Uh, you felt God's presence and God's love. You know, he loves you deeply. And uh, if you're looking for a faith family, Zion is a, is a really good church. Uh, we're a great community. We care about each other. We care about our community. We have a heart uh, to serve. We have many different ministries uh, for both you and if you have children. And we have opportunities for you to grow in your faith, but also to take those gifts that God has given us and to leverage them to do great things for our community and around the world as well. So Give us a call. You can call me if you want to talk about anything. Spiritual questions, 810-599-3490. Also, I want to thank A Better Covenant. Thank you so much for leading us in worship this morning. You guys were spectacular. Thank you for your message and just draw, drawing us uh, closer into, into the heart of Jesus. Don't forget, we have our annual meeting coming up on... Sunday, next Sunday, and uh, we have to pass our budget for the coming year, our ministry plan, as well as we have some uh, folks that are going to be in new leadership positions. So make sure you come and check that out. We have two options. You can watch it on Zoom or you can come here. If you come here, you have to sign up on Sign Up uh, Genie because it's limited capacity. Also, if you want to continue to grow in your uh, faith, we have many different opportunities. I have a Bible study on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. We're in Luke's Gospel, um, Sermon on the Mount, just ripping it apart, uh, growing in our faith, having a lot of fun doing it. And then in the evening, we have gathering around the Word and prayer. Just a, a, a short little midweek gathering where we uh, pray together, uh, read some scripture, unpack it a bit, and uh, sing a couple songs. So uh, join us for that That is at 7 o'clock, and that's via Zoom as well. Other than that, make sure that you check out your happenings for the coming week, next Friday. And uh, until then, I hope you have an awesome day.
and know that God loves you deeply. Thanks again for joining us. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, as you go out into the world, to forgive one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Thanks be to God. Before we close, we just want to thank everyone who allowed us to share our story and our message with you today. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, Council, and everyone who made sure that this service was a success. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity to share, and we hope that you've been blessed, and we hope that you've been encouraged. We're going to end with what we considered to be our theme song of 2020, It Is Well With My Soul.